My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, from verse 45 to 46. And the theme of our contemplation is caught in the very act. Caught in the very act. Let's go into prayer. Father in heaven, I, you and what is heaven, stand before your presence to thank you for being our God. We thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for being our Savior. You are going about doing good. We see your handworks in our lives. Your name is compassion. Your name is charity. You move around our families and we see your handworks. Father, we thank you for this successful convention we just finished in Dallas, Texas. You are ever faithful, Father. We did not hear any bad news. You were able to take us home one by one, family by family, individuals respectively. Father, you are so kind. You are so kind to us. Your name is kindness. Your name is God of vengeance. You fight the healing battle for your children. You destroyed all principles and powers. You annihilated us for you annihilated every evil doers and all the incantations and libations of the enemies against your people. What you do, we don't even see. <clears throat> all we see is the good works. Your name terrifies the ungodly and gladdens the heart of the faithful. Father, we love you. Father, we cannot thank you enough. Father, we appreciate you. We have an appointment with you tonight again. Father, continue to teach us every day through the events and nature around us about your goodness. Father, protect the image of good people in our midst. Many people love to do good. Many people love to do good. Many people love to help people. But some people that have done charity works are threatened one way or the other in so many places. And some are afraid to continue the, the work of charity. Some are traumatized. Some have done charity and they are misunderstood. Father, heal the wounded heart in their midst, in our midst, Father. Heal the wounded heart. Some have done charity and they are misunderstood. Some have been blackmailed because of their benevolence. Father, be their advocate in the court. Father, send them your paraclet to comfort them. It hasn't been easy for your children. We want to continue to go about doing good like you, Father. We don't want to be caught in the act of doing evil, but to be caught in the act of doing good. Father, we pray that you bless our goodness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you continue to bless your children's efforts in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you continue to bless those people that are charitable to each other and the family and communities around in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us never lack. Father, encourage many people to continue to help the poor in our midst without fear. The world is turning around and nobody knows what tomorrow will come to be. Many people are afraid. Father, we pray that you strengthen them. Comfort the dying. Some people that are dying are giving their wills to many people. Father, grant eternal rest to some of them that are dying. Some are philanthropists to death. Father, we pray that you continue to bless such people and their families. 
Some people have their will written to help other people even when they are dying. Some people even donated their kidney, their liver. Some people donated their whole body for science. God has blessed us people. It's not easy. Lavish givers even donated themselves. Father, we continue to bless our people. They are lavish givers. We pray that you, my God, will continue to bless our families one by one. Protect those people that have been taking care of many families as breadwinners. May their goodness and kindness not be in vain. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, how are you tonight? How are you? Take a deep breath and breathe out, child of God. Know that tonight we are two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus is there. Some people will be tired, but you always you always anticipate to see the Lord. God knows your effort. God sees your effort. God knows that we have appointed to him tonight. God appreciates your presence in this line. God appreciates you and your family. Pray for many people that are still working, but their spirit is willing to be with us in this line. Father, we cover all their job. We cover their works. Father, protect them. Protect each and every one of us. Father, bless our families. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, child of God, tonight, I would like you to present before the Lord your situation. Have you ever done good? And that good turned to be sad news. Present it before the Lord. The Lord is interested in your case. It is better to be caught in the very act of being good than to be caught in the very act of doing evil. As you are presenting your situation before the Lord, taking the bread, child of God, and breathe out, you have done charity to your in-laws and friends, and all you get is just a bad mouth. Gossip. Some people are ingrat. Some people are ungrateful. You are not doing it for any human being. I'm comforting you, child of God. You are not doing it for any human being. Yes, you are presented to a human being or human beings. But look beyond those people and say, for God's sake, I'm doing this. That will help you to find solace. That will help you to be comforted. Some people, no matter what you give them, they will never give you kudos. They pay you back evil for evil, good for evil. You, 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 you do good to them and they pay you back with evil. Sometimes it is in their nature. Natura non agitis salutum. Nature cannot make a jump. That is in their nature. Wicked person is wicked person or woman or man. Good people are good people. The Bible even said that a good tree bears good fruit. What do you expect from the wicked man's heart? What do you expect from wicked woman's heart? Just don't bother yourself. Stop troubling yourself. Trying to understand why this person is doing this life. Pray for him or her and see whether there will be conversion. It is in his or her own nature. Natura non agitis salatum. Nature cannot make a jump. I pray for your own healing tonight. That God will continue to bless you. Do not shy away from doing good. Do not shy away in the very act of doing good, child of God. 
Do not shy away. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you. I know you have been a victim. And you are laughing now. Love, it's better that you laugh. You are receiving your healing tonight. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. Yes. You help your friend. And your friend returned evil to pay you because of your goodness. I'm consoling you in prayer tonight, child of God. You 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 always uh, respond to your friends when they are they are, they are sick. You respond to them in need, and when you are uh, you have your own need, and you call them, they give excuses. You are not happy. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you are not happy. You are human, of course. Tonight, God has remembered you. God is healing you, child of God. God is healing you. God is healing you. Say amen, somebody. God is healing you, child of God. There was a documentary I was watching. It was about a young girl looking for a job. She was at the bus stop waiting for her boyfriend to take her to where she was looking for a job. Standing close to her at the bus stop was an elderly woman. The young girl whispered to her boyfriend in that documentary on the phone to hurry up that she didn't want to be standing close to filthy old people. Look at that. Bad mouth. She did not know that the elderly woman heard what she said. Suddenly, a car stopped in front of them, unknown to the, the elderly woman. She thought that the car was just a taxi. So, uh, the, the young lady that the car stopped for uh, came around and wanted to enter down the, uh, the front of the car. The elderly one also wanted to enter and the young girl pushed her down. Look at that. The young girl pushed the elderly woman down. The boyfriend was a good man, well-cultured. He advanced to the elderly lady where she was lying on the ground and helped her to be on her feet. He apologized to the elderly woman and promised to take her to her destination. How many such people are still in our own list? How many such people are still around? The boyfriend cautioned the, the girlfriend. But the girlfriend was still mad. Why was she mad? Because the person she was running away from at the bus stop entered the car with her. See how, how, people, how people behave. She doesn't have a car. She depended on someone to assist her. And she got the effort to push away her fellow woman. Look at that. H.U.D. man, am I hogam? You don't even know who you are trying to uh, push out from the car. You don't know who you are trying to uh, blackmail or torture in one word or the other or you're talking uh, him against tomorrow you don't even know who will help you and you're quarreling with someone even if you know the person why must you quarrel if, you, if, if that person is a stranger do you know the stranger Tomorrow is pregnant, according to people. You don't know what the tomorrow will, will deliver. It should be email.
So, the young man, the boyfriend apologized on behalf of uh, his girlfriend and took two of them in the car. The young girl was not happy. The person she was driving away from was in the car with her. Guess what happened? When I meant to you, unknown to the young lady, that the elderly woman she was talking about as being filthy was the owner of the company. <laughs> she was rushing to submit her CV. So when the boyfriend dropped uh, his girlfriend in front of the company, the boyfriend wanted to continue the journey with the elderly woman. And the elderly woman told the boyfriend that this place was where she's supposed to stop. She was the, the young girl was surprised. Two people going to the same place without even knowing that they were they will end in one destination. All of us are aspirants. Go, uh, preparing to go to heaven, whether you are Catholic, you are Muslim or Protestant or whatever, you have your different uh, symmetries. But our soul, our souls are going somewhere. The same place, the same person. Mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Everybody will give an account of his or her own stewardship. These two people we are standing at the bus stop, unknown to two of them that they were going to the same destination. God has sense of humor. When I watch documentaries, I learn a lot. The way you watch film or movies is not the way I look at it. I look at what I, what will I learn from this. Because these are activities, these are events of life, in one way or the other. So, this young girl received the shock of her life. Unknown to the young lady that the elder woman was the owner of the company. <laughs> the boyfriend wanted to continue the journey, but the woman said, oh, oh. I've reached my destination. The, the elderly woman introduced herself as the company owner and also the hotel around there. And they told the man that uh, uh, this hotel is also his own hotel. And uh, she gave the man the complimentary card and told her and told him at any time she, uh, he wants to have rest or anything or any function that uh, he should call this place and uh, the hotel will be given to him free. The young girl was moping uh, as if to say uh, his uh, leg was just uh, gummed on the ground because uh, she was dumbfounded that the young, the elderly woman she met at the, at the bus stop uh, that she said that she was filthy was the one that would uh, would interview her. She was the CEO of the company, the owner of the company. So you don't know, when you see people, strangers, be nice to people, whether you know the person or not. Be nice to people. You never know what tomorrow will bring. You don't know whether the stranger. You are quarreling with will be your game game changer in life. You never know what God will use someone to do for you. Look at look at these three people. Two we are caught in the very act of goodness. The boyfriend of this young girl was caught in the very act of goodness. The young lady, God used the the, the elderly one to teach the young one the lesson of her life because she might be she might be doing all the things to other people so God uh, use this elderly woman to teach her lesson I pray 
that many people that are like this young lady will change in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that whoever that will be listening to this anointed message will have change of heart if you are in that category. In the mighty name of Jesus. And also empower and embolden people like this elderly woman and the boyfriend of this young girl to continue to do good. It's good to be caught in the very act of goodness than to be caught in the very act of badness. It's not good to be wicked. It's good to have good heart. It's good to help people. Not when you are helping people. You are gossiping against people you are helping. How can you receive God's blessing? Nobody asks you anything. And you are telling people that you are helping someone. How can you receive God's blessing? Look at this elderly woman. She didn't even know that the car that was stopping at the bus stop was not a taxi. She was waiting for a, a taxi to take her. And this young girl didn't even know that both of them were going to the same destination. God has sense of humor. The younger lady was dumbfounded at where she was going. This elderly woman was also going there. And she was to be her CEO. <laughs> she didn't know how to start apologizing to the elderly lady. Look at that. The boyfriend was a well-cultured man doing good wherever he was. He cautioned the girlfriend and asked her whether she still wished to go to that company with shame. She didn't know what to do again. Well, I told you it was a documentary, and uh, both of them entered the same car and left and went home. But uh, the lesson I learned from the documentary was that uh, it's good to be good. It's good to be caught in the very act of goodness, like the young man that cautioned the, the girlfriend and at the same time helped the elderly one to stand on her feet. How about you, child of God? What are your plans about strangers? What are your plans about your brothers and sisters? What are your plans about your friends? Do you help your friends? Or after helping them, you gossip against them? Do you help your siblings? Or do you give grudgingly? Think twice about it tonight, child of God. Think twice about it. Do you want God to bless you? Or do you want people just to thank you? I prefer God to, to bless me and to than people to just thank me. The Bible says, your father that sees in secret will reward you for your goodness. But some people want their reward in the, on earth. It's good to have reward on earth. But uh, the father that sees in secret will bless you. You are, you, are, you, are, you are accumulating treasure for yourself in heaven. When you are doing good, even the Bible said, do not allow your right hand to know what your left hand is doing. Especially when it comes to goodness. And the Bible says, do not parade your goodness. Do not blow trumpet about your goodness. It's good to be caught in the act of goodness. But don't parade your goodness for people to see and to clap their hands for you. You have had your reward on earth. And you have denied yourself a reward in heaven. You have to count your blessings one by one. When God is blessing you. And when people also bless you, all you have to do is, I am an unworthy servant. I am just a divine instrument. It is God that helped me to help you. If God blesses me, I'll keep on blessing other people. 
and people will love you all the more. And your God will say, yes, this is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. You see how God will be happy with you? God will be happy with you when you are doing good and not parading your goodness. And that will bring us to the reflection of tonight. Gospel of Matthew chapter 24 from verse 45 to 46. It said, Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to give the others their food at the proper time. Look at that. So the Bible knows that we are created in time. It's only God that is timeless. When somebody is in need and asks you for help, if you are in position to help, help the person at the proper time. If you don't have anything or you are not in position, just tell the person, please, I wanted to help you, but unfortunately, I cannot at this time. Make it known to the person. Don't hang the hope of someone. But inside you, you know that you don't want to give. Make it clear to the person so that he or she can move to another person to see whether he or she will be helped. Don't give false hope. Don't give false hope to people. Look at what the Bible said. Who then is the faithful and wise, wise servant? The, the Bible says it's a wise, not just ordinary servant, but wise, wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of his household to give the others their food at the proper time. God made you to be rich for a purpose. God made you to be the breadwinner of your family for a purpose. If you look at yourself, if you examine yourself, you see that since you started giving people or helping people in your family, you, you, never, you are never poor. Rather, you are increased. God continues to increase your wealth. God continues to expand your, your territory. But for you, you think that you, you, you are wasting your money. Money is not everything, but money is good. Some people don't have money, but they, 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 they also uh, make people laugh. Whatever gift you have, use it in the name of the Lord. Some people have high presence. Money is not everything. Some people are very good in calling their friends and relations to know how they are doing. And many people cherish that. They may not be giving money, but they are extending their goodness to their brother, to their sisters, to neighbors around. Even when you ask your neighbor, how are you feeling today? You don't even know how your neighbor feels. Your neighbor feels very good. Oh, my neighbor... Oh, it takes, it takes, takes care of me. Oh, he acts after me. Oh, I have a good neighbor. Blessed is that servant whose master finds him or her doing so good when he returns. Verse 47 says, Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. Look at that. God will increase your wealth in the mighty name of Jesus. God will ex expand your territory in the mighty name of Jesus. God will bless your posterity and your prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Just for your single act of goodness. I am a I am a, I am a, on your jiquani home, where when you see, I am a, I am a, Macaneche Bocaho, Ele la 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 la, Ele la la la. Ihe menonazano, 
Omo wona mo kona ya mo Ihe me no no zano o Omo wona chi kona yo chi o Onye ji kwani ho wore weni si Ayama ayama ho makaneche boka o ayama Yes Don't brag Don't boast because of your wealth Don't boast Don't brag because of your beauty. Don't brag because of your children. All this is uh, from God. It is better that you live life of humility. Humble yourself before the Lord. Let people, let people appreciate your humility. Let people be the one that will be praising you. Not you praising yourself. And when people are praising you, you become humble about it. And God will continue to increase you. Because we have God of multiplicity. We have God of multiplicity. Jesus multiplied five loaves of bread and few fish. And was able to feed 5,000 people. Why wouldn't God multiply your wealth? Why wouldn't God bless you with longevity? Why wouldn't God come to you when you are in need? Matthew 7 from verse 1 to 2 says, The measure with which you measure others will be measured against you. When you are looking out for your brother or your sister and doing good, let people see you in the very act of goodness. Let your siblings see you in the very act of goodness. Let your children learn from your very act of goodness. It's good to be caught in the very act of goodness. Oh, my mom is very generous. When we go home, uh, she, de- she does this and so on. Oh, my dad is very good. He helps people. Oh, the in-laws will say, God bless our in-law. God bless. They will shower in blessings upon you. Why wouldn't you be happy that your in-laws are, are very happy with you? Why wouldn't you be happy that you're a good daughter-in-law? Why wouldn't you be happy that you're a good son-in-law? Why wouldn't you be happy that you're a good mother-in-law and they would like you to come again? Oh, mama, don't go. Oh, papa, don't go. Come again. Why are you going home? Stay with us. Are you the kind of mother-in-law or father-in-law that everybody will wish and be asking, when are you going home? When are you going home? When people start asking you this, oh, but you have overstayed your welcome, I tell you. <laughs> you have overstayed your welcome, I tell you. And they will be tired you if your children are happy when you are going on vacation. They are not learning anything from you. Daddy, when are you traveling? So that people will rest in this house. That's, that's, that's not good. Or oh, mommy, when are you going to walk? So that we have, we have a rest in this house. That's not good. It's not a good sign. Child of God, I'm in your way. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you, you. I'm talking to you. Does it sound familiar? All the Bible is telling us today is to conform ourselves in the B attitude. We have to conform ourselves and our lifestyle in the B attitude on the summer of the mount. We have to we have to learn from Jesus. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. These are the people caught in the very act of goodness. 
They are poor in spirit. And Jesus is telling us, it is better that you are poor in spirit. For kingdom of God is yours. The people that are mourning will be comforted. God is doing good and wants us to be like him. This is how God wants us to be. The be attitude. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Look at that. The be attitude. See how God is telling us something today. God is talking to you and I. The be attitude. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 3 to 12. God is talking to you and I. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 3 to 12. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Look at that. Some people are uh, hungry to do evil. But the Bible is telling us to be hungry and thirst for righteousness, to do good, for they shall be satisfied. You lack nothing. You have that spiritual and physical uh, uh, fulfillment that you have accomplished something because you are yearning and craving to do good. You are, you, you are not hungry for earthly food. You are thirsting for righteousness. Some people, goodness always uh, uh, their, their priority. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Look at that. Some people, some people are so merciful. Some people are very generous with their mercy, merciful heart. They will ask you, is there any other way I can help you? And when you have satisfied someone and the person says no, thank you, you have done more than enough, there is a kind of inner joy. There is a kind of inner joy you have. There is a kind of inner joy that you have, child of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. When you have purity of heart and mind, you don't, you don't think ill against your brother or your sister. You don't plan evil against your brother or your sister. How God is thinking well of you, the same way you think well of your brother or your sister, Jesus is thinking, he's thinking of you. My Lord is thinking, is thinking of you. Jesus is thinking, is thinking of you. My Lord is thinking, goodness about you. When God is planning good for you, some people are planning evil against their brothers or their sisters. Which planet on earth did you come from? Sometimes you see siblings, you'll be asking yourself, did I come from the same womb with this man or woman? That baffles me, child of God. You see, blood brothers and sisters, where they are fighting each other, that one is the worst. They fight as if to say they are not from the same mother and father. And some of them have sent their parents in an untimely grave. And you expect God to bless you and your siblings. You expect God to bless you and your family. You are bringing cause to yourself. Yes, we are talking to you. Your siblings are praying that you, that you have, make peace with each other. And you are the one that is against peace in your family. You are the one that is not looking for peace. And you are planning evil. It is either you repent or you face the wrath of God. Yes, I'm talking to you. 
God created you in his own image and likeness. And you decided to, fit, to, 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 be, to be worshiping evil. To be worshiping evil. Agents of Satan. Just to punish your brothers and sisters. And Satan is happy for you. You are, you are happy. And you are, you, are, you are bragging that you are agent of Satan. <clears throat> you don't know what you are doing to yourself. Better have pure heart so that you'll be able to see God. But how can you see God when you are, your heart is polluted against your brother or your sister? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. You ask yourself, am I a peacemaker? This is one of the B attitude. What God wants us to be. The B attitude. The kind of attitude God wants us to be. Are you a peacemaker? Or are you a troublemaker in your family? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Look at that. Are you a child of God that always seeks for peace? Are you a child of God that always looks for peace? Or are you the troublemaker? Think about the child of God. What do you gain when you are a recalcitrant? You are proven stubborn. What do you gain when you are resisting uh, that uh, your brothers and sisters will not have peace in that house? They call you on the phone. You look at the phone. I don't want to. You don't want to answer your phone. Your brothers and sisters will be worshiping you. Your brothers and sisters will be afraid of you. They will leave whatever they are doing, and you are stressing them out. You are. You think you are punishing your brothers and sisters. Your own punishment is coming. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you. You better amend your ways. Learn from the Bible what God did to Cain that punished his brother Abel. Follow just God. Follow just God. I pray that God will repel the spirit of Cain in many families in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will convert every spirit of Saul in many families to, be, to become Paul in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be evangelizers, not killers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be divine instruments instead of being agents of Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 10 of Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for righteousness' sake. For this is the kingdom of heaven. Look at that. When people are persecuting you, trying to crucify you, they will be rejoicing, thinking that they have crushed you without knowing you think that you are just um, punishing a frog by kicking a frog on the butt. You are helping the frog to reach his destination faster. Because the frog is just jumping and limping. And you just kick, kick the frog on the butt. 
you are helping the frog to move faster. You know, sometimes when people think that um, they are punishing you by persecuting you in your office, thinking that they are persecuting you in your area of work, they don't even know that uh, they are trying to help you to find a place where you will be celebrated. <laughs> Child of God, cry no more. Sometimes we are comfortable in a place. I don't blame you. Nobody likes suffering. Nobody likes transfer. But when God wants to promote you and you're not getting the sign, God can use your enemies to help you to reach your destination. God can use your enemies as a ladder to promote you where you're supposed to be. No wonder why Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It sounds funny. <laughs> That's why vengeance is for God. Allow God of vengeance to fight your battle. The God of vengeance will turn their wickedness and their persecution to favor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Am I talking to someone tonight? Does it sound familiar? Many people experience such in their area of work. There was a young man that was uh, a business uh, tycoon. And uh, along that line, his own business was the hot one. Hot cake. And people were fighting him, fighting him, fighting him. And he called me on the phone and I gave him Novena Mass. I gave him prayers. And he booked for Novena Mass. I was praying for him. I blessed the uh, oil for him and the water. And uh, every time he would just put it on the sprinkle it uh, in his shade and uh, continue to do his job. And I told him, um, three o'clock, go for divine mercy. He will close his shop and go for divine mercy and come back. The customers will continue to wait for him. Many people already knew that three o'clock he went for divine mercy. And, and when other neighbors will be calling him, uh, call, calling them to come and patronize them, they say, no, we are waiting for him. Uh, we know that uh, he went for divine mercy. Come see customers. The people along the line said, what kind of juju, what kind of voodoo was this man doing? Uh, and and uh, the man said, I'm doing voodoo, Jesus voodoo. <laughs> When Jesus in the tabernacle uh, is cooking food for you and the planning for your business, oh, you'll be saying, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. There is power in the Lord. There is power in the Lord. You are my everything in life. Yes, Lord, you're my everything in life. Oh, my Savior. Ewe zogagi. Odi hembo chukwama. Ewe zogachuku. Odi hembo. Oh, sasagi. Sasagi onye mwemo. Abo nane gige hicha mayam Lord. Jesus is my everything. Your everything. He protects you. He fights your battle, child of God. He did not run away from his business. Rather, he anchored himself and his faith in the Lord and God fortified his banner. Child of God, fortify yourself in prayer. Fortify yourself in the Lord. Don't be tired. Don't be tired, child of God. Don't be tired, oh child of God. Don't be tired. 
The enemies are afraid of you. But you think that the enemies are pursuing you. They are afraid of you, child of God. But because you don't know who you are and the kind of God that you have, you are afraid of them. <laughs> I want you to understand who you are and the kind of God that you see. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 says, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely. The Bible knows. Jesus knows that people can accuse you falsely and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account because you're a Christian, because you're an intercessor, because you are in the heart of Jesus and made prayer ministry, because you are a child of God, because you are the breadwinner, because you have been a philanthropist. When people cajole you, look at what God, what Jesus told us in, in verse 12 of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. He said, rejoice, child of God, and be glad. The Bible did not say here, start crying. No, no, no. The Bible say, did not say here, be afraid. No, he said, rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Look at that. You are not alone. In other words, you are not alone. That's what the Bible is telling you. Sometimes you think that you are alone in this. Sometimes you think that you are alone in this kind of condition. You are afraid. Why are you afraid? You don't even know. You are afraid of someone. And that person you are afraid of is also afraid of you. <laughs> you have a, a very big God. That is always by your side. Look at Psalm 91. Even when 10,000 fall at your right and 1,000 fall at your left, you, you, it will never approach, child of God. Can you hear it? How will I say it to you so that you will be able to understand? How will I say it to you? Yes, I understand that there are many enemies, including your blood brother or your sister. When you are pursuing a snake, the snake is afraid of you, but at the same time, he's also trying to strike you because you are threatening him. But when you have God, God is bigger than any kind of... Remember that in the Bible, Jesus was the word that was used to create the word. The word of God let there be earth, let there be light, all the animals, let there be this. And when it came to the time to create human beings, they had a meeting. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. And after creating man and woman, God handed over all these animals and earthly things to man and woman. And look at child of God. When someone, the evil people, the wicked people, when they condescend so low to attack you, however, they, and then they turn themselves according to people, whatever they, the magicians are doing, and they turn themselves and their witchcraft in, and they become animal, you have defeated them because they couldn't stand you as a human being. And they condescended so low to become something lower than your own uh, uh, level. You crush the person with prayer and fasting. You crush the person with your heels. Look at how, look at the statue of our mother Mary. How her heel was able to crush that, that uh, rebellious serpent. The thief in the Bible was deceived by devil. And the, the spiritual if we have, our mother Mary, crushed the devil. Am I communicating tonight? 
The devil defeated Eve. But our own mother Mary, the spiritual Eve, the mediatus of her time, was able to show devil that you cannot conquer every woman. That he has come to bring that salvific mission to fulfillment through his son, through her son. And you are among the people that this great mediatrix of our time, Mother Mary, will liberate through her powerful intercession. And that's why when you are saying the rosary, devil runs away. Witches and wizards run away. Let's go into prayer. Child of God, taking deep breath and breathe out. I'm empowering you tonight to stand firm. I'm empowering you tonight to stand firm. Stop fidgeting. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am empowering you. Don't be afraid, child of God. I'm empowering you tonight. With the power of the Holy Ghost. To stand firm, child of God. To stand firm, child of God. Book of Psalm 34, from verse 4 to 5 says, I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered, delivered me from all my fears. Book of Psalm 34, from verse 4 to 5. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all Isaiah book of Isaiah 41 verse 10 says fear not child of God for I am with you be not dismayed be not dismayed for I am with you I am your God I will strengthen you loving father I thank you in spite of my unworthiness, Father, I thank you for giving this message to your children to strengthen them and to fortify them. Let this night be a night of blessing for them. I've empowered them, Father. I bless them with Deuteronomy 31 verses that says, Be strong and courageous. I thank you, Father. For making your children to realize that you are their God. Father, may they stand strong. When your peace is with us, we shall not be in pieces. Because we are at your beck and call. You always guide us with your spirit. Let your children continue to be strengthened by your power. Let your children be guided by your Holy Spirit. It has not been easy for your children, Father. Many of them are still struggling. Many of them are still struggling. Many are still battling with the devil. But you, my God, you are their Alpha and Omega. You are their strength, Lord. You protect them both in daylight and in night. Some of them are afraid to sleep. Some are having bad dreams. Bad dreams. Bad dreams. But God, you wipe away their fears, both in dream and daylight, in the mighty name of Jesus. I can't stop loving you, Jesus, in my life. I can't stop loving you, Jesus in my life, I can't stop loving you, Jesus in my life, I can't stop loving you, Jesus in my life, Savior Jesus, I can't stop loving you, oh my Savior, you are the light, you are the light, you are the light of the world. Apart from you, I can do nothing. Oh, oh Father, 
Savior, people. Father, Lord, I thank you for being with us tonight. You are the mommy of God with us. Let your children feel your presence. Let your children feel your presence. Father, fill your children with your grace. Your grace will be sufficient for us. Your grace will be sufficient for us. Bless all our children. Bless all our children. Some of them are tortured and tormented in one way or the other. Father, guide what they watch in the internet. Some of them, after watching horror films, some of them are initiated and they are afraid and they convulse as if to say they have evil spirits. I crush all evil spirits, all incantational libations of the enemies against our children. I annihilate them from any type of evil spirit that they see in the internet. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against all the evil spirits that are in the internet that that are brainwashing our children and making them to look as if to say they are possessed. Father, I crush them. I annihilate them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray that you fight their battle. Fight their battle. Yes, I'm talking to you. Go away from that child of God. Go away from that child of God. Go away from that family. I crush those people. I crush those spirits in the internet that have been fighting my children. I crush you people in the mighty name of Jesus. My children shall never be Lord over in the internet anymore. God has remembered his children and God has seen where you, you, you always love our children and make them to be possessed by your known spirit in the internet. What they watch and see, they are traumatized and they cannot sleep. And you torture them and torment them and they run away from their room. Devil is a liar. I place, I place the spirit of God against all the evil spirits in the internet that have been crushing and tormenting my children. Go away from that house. That body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. May God in infinite mercy bless you. I bless all of you, Psalm 91. I cover you to the precious blood of Jesus. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for listening to us tonight and for blessing us tonight. Peace unto you. Amen. <laughs>